No gentleman nor lady was able to take their eyes off you. Let me give you a hand, my lady. A few of these are quite stubborn to get off, isn't it? But it shouldn't be too difficult. Are you perhaps feeling unwell, my lady? A headache? That's not good. Would my lady want me to fetch some medicine for the headache then? All right. But please do let me know if it persists. I wouldn't want my lady to go to bed with a throbbing headache. <laughs> so much fun, up to style. But fear not, for my lady's sacrifice was not made in vain. Oh, Shirley, you must know. My lady was a star of the ball tonight, the epitome of beauty. No gentleman nor lady was able to take their eyes off you. I'm telling my lady the absolute truth. You cannot imagine how happy I was that every preparation made for my lady had not gone wasted in the least bit. Are you worried that today's condition had somehow affected how the pictures will come out tomorrow? No, oh, do not worry, my lady. You looked absolutely splendid. You must take my word for it, for my lady surely knows that I do not do empty flattery. If I ever send my lady off to any event without doing my utmost best making sure you looked perfect, well, I might as be refused food for a week and pack my belongings in shame. So, do you believe me now when I tell you that I enjoy making my lady look pretty? Rubbish. My lady should not think such thoughts. They would only dishearten you. Just the fact that my lady trusts me to do you up with my own hands gives me all the confidence that I need. Whether it's for a large audience or not, I still can't believe I have the opportunity to transform my lady into the loveliest female in any room. A new day means a new look, and I have not seen any style as of yet that my lady has not been able to completely make her own. That's because I'm not the one out and about mingling with everyone like you are, my lady. I'm only making you look pretty. And, well, getting ready for any gathering is the most exciting part, isn't it? I do know that what my lady does is never an easy job. I understand that now, ever since coming here. Day may come when it becomes easier, or may not. 
my lady. You did very well tonight. I cannot be more proud. Has the mistress not spoken a word to my lady tonight? Would it have changed anything if she had, my lady? Well, I'm glad there were no words exchanged then. Forgive me if I'm speaking out of turn, but I just do not understand why the mistress is so hard on my lady. Everyone, including myself, can see how much blood, sweat and tears my lady puts in for the family every day. And yet, I don't understand just how the mistress cannot see any of that. Being satisfied is one thing, but acknowledging my lady's hard efforts and work is another. Why doesn't my lady ever get angry? Bottling up everything inside can't be any good, I'm sure. It'll come out in the worst way possible one day. It's true. I've seen it many times before. Not exactly. Well, to tell the truth, I can't say that I trust those words fully, my lady. I mean, there must be some way my lady is coping with how the mistress treats you. One would be in therapy or at least keep a diary, but my lady doesn't do either of those things. I will find it hard to believe if my lady tells me that simply taking a bath relieves all your stresses out for the day. Do not tell me. Is my lady secretly chummy with the mistress? And so the reason the mistress is so hard with you is so that no one will find out about her soft spot for my lady. Oh no, it can't be. Well, I've only thought about it once or twice. Yes, my lady. I know. Sorry, my lady. I have never, nor has anyone else that I've heard from for that matter. The first day I came to work here, Elise told me to not make any needless conversation with the mistress. She told me to only speak when spoken to, or when I had a message I needed to relay to the mistress. Truthfully speaking, my heart's always in my throat whenever it's my turn to bring in tea to a study. I could not imagine having to have a conversation with her. Oh, no, I never stay in there for long. The mistress likes to be alone for most of the time. It's a good thing, really, or she might find me standing in my own puddle of sweat in the corner of the room. I was. I find it amusing that you still remember, my lady. Oh, I do not mean to, but I cannot help it. Though in the end, my lady put me at ease when she started talking to me. Still, I was quite tense for a good week. Being in a new place with new people has always been intimidating. Well, I guess it's because I want to be liked and do my job well. But it doesn't come easy when I'm learning everything for the first time. Never been good with my words either, even though everyone is so kind and friendly and more than ready to help me if need be. On really tough days though, I try my best to remember what my grandmother taught me when I was little. She told me that a true lady inspires others to bring out the best selves. It helps me to remember that when I need to get out of my own head so that I can focus on other people and find something, anything I can offer a helping hand to. My grandmother took me aside and told me that when I was just a little girl. When I was a child, I always had a very hard time talking and I lacked what my mother would call 
perfectly pleasing countenance. I had a lot of insecurities at such a young age, especially when I would compare myself with my other sister. She always had been such a lovely social butterfly ever since I could remember. All the neighbouring children wanted to be friends with her, and all the adults favoured her. So, I couldn't help but see the contrast between our two personalities. Didn't have a hard time figuring out which of the two people preferred either. Every day, all I wanted was to be just a little bit more like her. I told myself, if only I could be a bit more ladylike, then everything would be alright. But I realised that copying my sister, the way she dressed, how she talked, all her mannerisms, meant that I was only going to be second best. Perhaps my grandmother saw me losing myself and decided to instill some wisdom upon me. Not that I completely understood what she meant that time, but repetition did work its way through my tough head later down the years. My grandmother would always say something simple to me in a situation like that, and it never failed to help me become more aware of my own behaviour. She never lashed out at me, nor threatened to beat me with a wooden stick like I always feared. Oh yes, my lady. Very soft-spoken, I remember. It was as if her voice was like a warm summer breeze. You would have to be real quiet to hear her. Once you did, just like the wind removed the leaves on every single branch, your very own heart and soul would flutter at her words. She never spoke much, but those few words I can never forget even now. I do. I miss her every day, my lady. But I try not to be too sad. After all, she didn't live a long and fulfilling life just so I could cry at every mention of her. I'm able to be happier now whenever she's in my thoughts and with the memories of her in my heart. I believe she gave me the inspiration to come and work here at the estate. And I believe being here has helped me live a more meaningful life. I understand, my lady, even though it is unfortunate. But it does not have to be that way, my lady. It could stop with you. Perhaps, if speaking to the mistress is not something you can confidently do right now, maybe writing her a letter about how my lady feels would help. It would be a start. Surely the mistress will not reject a handwritten letter from her own daughter. I found that the best way to communicate to someone was to be completely honest, meaning my lady shouldn't be afraid to be more vulnerable with your words. From what I've heard, the mistress will go into town tomorrow morning and have lunch with Mrs. Livins. I don't think she'll be back before sundown. And since my lady is free from three to five tomorrow, wouldn't that be the perfect time to sit down and write the letter? Whenever my lady is ready, of course. And if it's of any assurance to you, I'll personally be the one to deliver my lady's letter to her study. The sooner the better. I'll make sure no one deserves my lady during that time. Are you asking about myself, my lady? Well, tomorrow I guess I would be spending time finishing things that need mending or cleaning. Things that I haven't gotten around to do yet. Essentially all the work that I've not been able to finish today. Not so exciting, is it, my lady? Surely, my lady, you will know what's best in your mind than I would. I wouldn't want to influence you on what or 
how to write, no matter how polished a letter may sound with two minds working on it than one. It just wouldn't be from your heart, my lady. But I have to say thank you for thinking greatly of my opinion. My lady is so very kind to say so. It does feel that way sometimes. But I believe overcoming this great hurdle would be just the thing you need to get to the other side. It would be wise to start before it's too late, wouldn't it? Cheer up, my lady. I know you would be able to do this. That makes me very happy to hear. Hopefully you didn't see me as a nagging presence, my lady. I would hate to be one, especially since my lady sees me every day. Anyone would tire of me already. Oh, of course not, my lady. I will never tire of you. I'm not mental in that way. I had just thought so because... Well, even if human beings are social creatures, we are also meant to have quality time alone. But I know that my lady normally does not get the privilege of having that. Sad to say it is not, my lady. After all, my lady does not live like a lot of the rest of us do. Forgive me, my lady. I've got to do something about the way I speak. That's only because I try to be on my utmost best behaviour when I'm around my lady. Any other time, I tend to slip my words every so often. Well, I've been told that I can come off a bit cold towards others. A bit blunt, people say. Though I definitely do not mean to act that way on purpose, my lady. I guess I lack the skill to sympathise with others using my words. But I'm used to hearing that. When I was still a small child, kids at school used to call me a robot. Even my best friend at the time. She told me that I probably had a switch somewhere on my back. Something that can turn me on and off. If I heard someone say that to a little child now, I would feel heartbroken for them. But since it was something that was said to me, I must say I don't feel so terrible about it. Even so, I did feel a bit hurt when my friend never defended me in any way. But at the same time, I also knew that what they said was something utterly foolish. You must be right, my lady. Indeed, if it's something I still remember to this day, then it must have weighed on my heart more than I thought. But when I thought about it from other people's perspectives, I could not help but admit that I really was an emotionless kid. My mother even told me that I hardly ever cried when I was a baby. But what people don't know was that I never meant to show that I did not feel anything. In fact, I like to believe that I was quite the sensitive child. It's just that for some reason, I never outwardly expressed the way I felt, and instead always decided to act in a more reasonable fashion. Oh yes, I was quite the rational child. Never let my emotions show what I felt inside. Instead, I always opted to act more logically than most my age. Perhaps that is why everyone believed me to be a cold person. Whenever a friend would talk to me about a problem they had with another friend, I was quick to tell them that their emotions were the reason they had gotten into the fight in the first place. In the end though, they would always get mad at me and run off to tell some other friend about whatever happened. <laughs> my lady, I said that I was rational, but I never said that I was smart. I never realised that all my friends wanted 
was a listening ear or someone to sympathise with them. Back then, I could never quite understand why someone would get so angry at me when all I did was give a solution to their problem. So many instances like that just made me realise how much of our emotions were the actual main culprit in producing a problem itself. We are more prone to be led by our hearts than our minds. Well, my lady, it is easier than before. When I was a child, I was still navigating how to deal with being myself whilst also wanting to be friends with people that didn't like who I was. Now it's more of me accepting who I am, but also not letting that be a barrier into making friends and being more kind and understanding with other people. Oh yes, it's a very good thing, my lady. Serving my lady and her family has made me realise that caring for someone enough to understand them and help them in any way I can leads me to greater happiness than if I was to only care and think about myself. My lady has shown me that it is all right and a good thing to show my emotions, that it is all right to tell the people who care about me how I feel. that be alright with you, my lady? Oh no, do not feel bad about telling me anything, my lady. I do love listening about your day and how it was like. My lady is able to share with such depth and detail, I feel as if I'm listening to a story. All the while, my lady is helping me to become a better listener. Yes, you do, my lady like a great storyteller. I've never heard anyone speak so articulately. My lady's uncle, the one who moved to Argentina when my lady was still a child. This book? Oh, I see. So this book was gifted unto my lady from my lady's uncle back then. I've never known that. Is that why my lady always has this book nearby to read though in the night? I had always wondered why my lady read this particular book before bed. Now I know why. I never had anyone tuck me into bed with a story, so I do not know the feeling. Does reading this book take my lady back to the time when you were together with your uncle? When my lady was much younger? Wouldn't he be happy to hear that his favourite niece still cherishes the book he had given to her when my lady was only a small child? Perhaps when you marry, my lady, and have children of your own, you could read this book to your little ones before bed. My lady could continue the tradition your uncle has started with you. Still, wouldn't it be lovely to see my lady and her uncle reunited after all these years? My lady must miss him terribly. Unfortunately, I do not have the gift of reunion. But do you continue to love this book just the way you do, my lady? Read it, love it, and cherish it. Not just the book itself, but the story that was meant to be read. Then, when the day comes that my lady finally gets to meet her uncle again, we read it together. Isn't that what stories are meant to do? Bring people together. You're already excited about it, my lady. Oh, do not mind me. Go on and continue the story. I'm sure there's a reason my lady's uncle chose this particular book. 
perhaps it would even bring more fond memories of him that my lady has not remembered in a while. my lady something. It is nothing grand, really, but would my lady do me a favour? Although I cannot be confident that I will be able to read it like the great storyteller my lady tells me her uncle is, I was thinking I would like to start read aloud sessions for the small children at the primary school I go to every Sunday. The school is struggling to pull in funds for the children's library. And I was wondering if my lady had any books you would be able to give, or even lend for the school. Just some light volunteering. I go whenever I can. If there's anything I could do to help, surely I would be able to help in that department. Would that be alright with you, my lady? No. No, of course not. Thank you, my lady. Truly. I cannot be more grateful. My lady's kindness will always be remembered in the children's hearts. Yes. Yes. Very happy. Can you tell my lady? <laughs> Never mind me. I shall not disturb my lady any longer in your nightly reading. I have taken your attention away from your book for far too long. 